Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning, I'm Kyla and you're listening to a Day of Prayers Morning Bible Study. We're glad you could join us. Before we get into the word, Layla, can you please open us up in prayer? Absolutely. Thank you. Lord, we just come together, Lord, in your name and we gather in your presence, Lord, to seek you out, Lord, and to find what it is that you have in store for us, Lord. Whatever it is that you want to teach us and however it is that you want to guide us, Lord. We open ourselves to you, Lord, and submit ourselves unto your guiding. Lord, we ask that you continue to flow through our Bible studies, Lord, and that you minister to each and every person their needs, Lord, and you touch them in the way that they need it, Lord. Fix anything that is broken, Lord, and strengthen any part that's weakened, God. Be their strength and their tower, Lord, their stronghold, and their all in all, Lord. And I just thank you for your abundant mercy and grace, Lord, and your abounding love towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome back to our our morning Bible study and our continuation of Romans. We're still in chapter 1, and yes, we are still being led to go over uh, verses 16 through 32. This is the, you are, have not clicked on a, an incorrect <laughs> one, right? We This is the third, I'll say, day or part of this, mm-hmm. this section of scripture. Okay, so, so rest assured. It, you're on. You're on the right one. That's right. So, exactly where the Lord wants you to be. Amen. Uh, so, with that, can I get a volunteer to reread Romans one verses sixteen through thirty-two, please? I will. All right, LaCharles. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in us, in, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the being understood by the things which are made, even its eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God has also given them to uncleanliness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is, for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to be a de- to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with, the, with, un- with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, Full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Hmm. Amen. There, there is a lot in there. And if, if you have been following along with us for the past you know, few days, couple, two, three days now, you will, <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll say this as a, a caveat. Again, 
this is in no way this section of scripture and what we're studying is not ever meant to condemn anyone right there is one that convicts of sin <clears throat> and that's the holy spirit and scripture makes that very plain christ in his ministry his earthly ministry said that very plainly about the holy spirit that that's part of his role is to convict of sin we are simply here to encourage and admonish i'll say everyone because this is for everyone whether you choose to believe or not but we encourage everyone however our conversation is primarily directed at i'll say the church or the body of christ the bride of christ those who would call themselves christians and believers because it matters it it matters to the lord it's something that he requires of us he says be holy for i am holy so Again, this is no way meant to condemn, but the the hope, the goal, the desire is to encourage and admonish each and every one that would call on the name of the Lord to reflect his nature and character, Remove the, removing the things in our lives that don't reflect him and being become more, I'll say, conformed to the image of Jesus the Christ. So with that being said, um, promise we're going to start with you all right so as we stated yesterday so what is it that the holy spirit has has spoken and ministered to you that you love to share or what questions do you have and then after promise the floor is open for anyone else that has questions or or anything else the holy spirit's revealed okay okay yes all right so go ahead promise okay first the lord wanted to talk was talking to me about verse 28, where it says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Mm. And also verse 26, where it said, For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. Okay. So the Lord was showing me that Excuse me. he were. Remind me of Ezekiel where the harlot woman, the one who's paying people to have inappropriate relationships. Okay. So that's just what reminded me of. And the Lord speaking to me about that originally, I thought it said God's wrath that God was destroying them. But then I just, the Lord said, no, it's not me destroying them. I'm literally getting them up to what they want. They're mm. going away with their best friend, and they end up killing themselves in the process. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. It's an interesting point, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, You're welcome. Anyone else have anything they want to share or comment on with that? Oh, First, I said yes. Um. In verse 28, what the Lord was speaking to me about, it's like how Promise was saying, and here's the Lord is also showing me that they purposely forgot what they're supposed to do. It reminds me of whenever you know you're doing something wrong, you try to conveniently forget the rules. And so you have a, a I say, a excuse that be plausible. Mm-hmm. I forgot about this. But in truth, you just wanted to forget about it. And he's saying that they try to make, try to make their consciences clean by giving the caveat that they forgot about when in truth they had no understanding or it wasn't understanding they had no desire no desire yes thank you no desire to understand and to keep what the lord was saying to them Mm -hmm. they wanted to forget it disregard it okay that was an interesting point Mm -hmm. from both of you well i i think it's um important um, promise in that um, it's similar to the prodigal son, mm-hmm. right? To so the father, because he loved the son, said, well, I, I will allow you to leave my protection and my provision and my guidance and my house and everything to go pursue what you've decided you need to pursue, even though I don't agree with you. Mm-hmm. But I love you. I'm going to allow you to find this out yourself. I believe the father did that in the hope that his discovery would lead him back to the father and that the relationship with the father was the most important. For some people, they don't always come back to that conclusion. 
and their decision to separate themselves from God leads them to death. But to others, it's a time of sifting and allowing the enemy to do their work so that they turn back to God. Many people say, how could a loving God do that? Whatever that may be. But I think it's here that it's their decision to separate themselves from God is what the clear understanding is. God's decision is never to do us harm, never to do us ill will, but always to have a, a relationship with us. It's our decisions that bring upon the wrath that comes from that, of our decision to separate ourselves from God. Mm-hmm. And you know, Even in the story of the prodigal son, you can glean from that that the father had told him no at some point and had tried to restrain him but the son was unwilling to walk under that restraint any further and he would have nothing less than take his money and go because he would not remain in the place that his father had prepared for him and so that's that's like with us you think about god prepared goodness for us and even in these scriptures he's talking about giving them over to a debased mind so the the other side of that is meaning they had their right mind and God is the only one that prepared that for us. He's the one who keeps us sane and thinking properly and appropriately. And when we refuse to maintain that position of grace underneath him, then what's left is to go, okay, there's the curse is out there. I don't recommend that you take it, but it's out there. When, when the curse shows up, it's going to look like this. It's going to do this to you. You're going to have holes in your bag. I mean, like, it's all lined out in the backside of Deuteronomy 28. The curse is out there, and this is how you'll experience it should you choose not to remain in the grace and the covering that I've provided for you. And for these people in particular, how much of it resides on just having a right mind, having a mind that is sane and not crazy and not par- thinking that these things are the way to, the way to go. But God always prepared the right place for us. Even Adam and Eve, he put them in a protected enclosure of pleasure the garden was good and it was sustained it was provided for it was blessed and they opted to go outside of that place and nothing has changed from that today jesus said i i have you in the palm of my hand i hold you in the palm of my hand and no one snatches you out but as he articulated to me you can climb down Mm mm-hmm you can you can excuse yourself. You can take yourself out of my protection, but it doesn't mean I let you go. It doesn't mean anybody came and forced you out of my hand, but he did give us a free will. That's why he also encourages us to abide in him. That's right. Abide, remain in me, right? Live in me mm-hmm. and I in you, right? That, mm-hmm. that's, that matters. And when we do that abiding, don't get tired in your mind of doing it. It takes effort to be diligent. It takes effort to walk in a way that's pleasing to God. It takes effort. It's not something you have to train yourself and it becomes easier over time as you renew your mind and you practice a habit. But in the way of what everyone else is doing, the broad and what's what's popular um, and the self-control and the self-restraint that you have to engage in, it's it takes work. Mm-hmm. But... It's doable and it's worth the effort to remain in that place with him so that we can continue to walk with the mind of Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. But as we, we dig into the things that were said, right, let's, uh, I'll say, let's take our, our, heaven, our seat in the heavenly places with Christ, mm-hmm. right? And because what we have done here over the past a couple, two, three days is really delve into some of these, I'll say, topic issues, top, you know, categorical issues or, or under topics, right? Where, uh, like I say, let's, let's take a that 100,000 foot view, if you will, and, and look at what Paul's communicating here, right? Because he starts off this whole, what happens in Romans is Paul is laying the structure, for life and godliness and and for the church or the body of Christ to live and operate in, right? And he begins this, let's also remember, he's writing this letter, this epistle, to people that he has not yet met, right? And, And then we've discussed, now this is the third day of us just discussing some very hard things, Right? But let's let's put this, I'll say in context, but I don't th- even think that's the right word. Um, 
Right, he, he introduces himself, and he also, again, sets the foundation, which is Christ, here in the first few verses, right? This is why Christ is who he is. And he is the foundation. He is the, without saying the chief cornerstone, he's also that, right? But he's the foundation which everything else is set on, set upon, and built upon. And then he, he's encouraging the people in Rome, Right? Not to be unaware, right, and, and all these other things of of the things of God, but then also of His desire for the people, right? That you see that fatherly instinct in Paul really coming out here, right? Where he's he's concerned for their well being, right? But then again, he's still setting the tone and the structure, right? He begins discussing about faith in verses sixteen and seventeen, right? Hey. Salvation is for everyone, all who want it. And then, in verse 18, he begins discussing the wrath of God. And he does that for literally the rest of the chapter. But why? Because these, these things matter. And we've, we've been talking about this for, like I said, the past couple, two, three days. Where, yes, we have this foundation in Christ. And we access this, this foundation, our salvation, through faith, right? Uh, which we have to live out in faith. And then he goes into this, I'll say, laundry list of, of things that are meant to ensnare us, which come as a result of choice. And no, we can't do, we can't, I'll say, absolve ourselves of these things or, or do away with them on our own power. We have to do them by faith. Right? So he's already given here in those those couple verses, 16 and 17, the, I'll say, tools on how to overcome all these other things. Christ already overcame, that's our foundation. But then we can overcome all this because of our faith. Right, but in verse 18, right, he's discussed, the wrath of God is revealed against ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Right, we've been discussing them the past couple days about there being a choice, or we have a choice. Yes, and it's good to be surrounded by believers to encourage us and admonish us and, and teach us, and you know, especially those that are, are firm in the faith and have been in the faith for a long time to, to train us and equip us and, you know, as the Lord leads. However, it still comes down to us. It begins with me. I have to choose for myself who I'm going to serve. Or, but then... As he continues, he talks about since the creation of the world is invisible attributes are clearly seen, this is verse 20, being understood by the things that were made, right? Even his eternal power, so that they're without excuse. So I'm reminded, as I read that, I was reminded of David, who writes in the Psalms about um, even the trees clap their hands, praising the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And this is another thing that we've discussed here in the past couple of days about he inhabits the praises of his people. And it's giving thanks to the Lord, right? Which you, you see in verse 21, right? It said, they didn't glorify God, and they were not thankful, mm -hmm. right? They professed to be wise, but they became fools as a result and changed the glory of an incorruptible God into the image of corruptible man. Hmm. So trying to put the Lord in a box or make him manageable. You can't manage an omnipotent, omniscient, uh, omniscient, omnipresent, and sovereign God. That is an impossibility. One who was not created. But I also want to cover this, right? I feel led to cover this because it talks about from the beginning. So I want to point out some things, right? And, and the Lord calls the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But let's also, let's look at what happened. We know in Genesis 3, or so I'll encourage everyone <laughs> to uh, get some walking shoes on because we're going to go through some scriptures, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> just to cover some some things in this and, and just to get a, um, I'll say, more complete, a more full understanding, Right? The Lord's the same yesterday and today and forever. He's not a man that he shall lie. And he repeats himself to us for every generation so that we would learn, that we would know, that we would 
grow in him, being conformed to his image, right? Mm -hmm. And not as a force or obligation, but because we love him and our desire is to be pleasing to him and to glorify him. So, so if you could, please turn to Genesis chapter 3, right? And what happens in the first few verses? It talks about the serpent being extremely mm-hmm. cunning, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. And he's speaking with woman, later called Eve after the curse. And what does he do? He says, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Right? Yes. Okay. He tries to call things into question. Right? What, tries to call what God said into question. Now, right there, right then and there, woman, later Eve, could have sorted that out and just said, This is truth. This is what it is. But as we're reading in Romans, what happened? She didn't. She did not, no. And she fell for the trap and ate the fruit. Well, did she really fall for the trap? Or did no. the trap confirm the things that she wanted to believe in her? Each person, it, man, is tempted when they are drawn away by their own lust. Exactly. Exactly. It is what it is. Right? Right. It goes back to verses 24 and 25. God gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged, as verse 25, the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You're going to say something, brother? I was just going to say in in relationship to your question, you can prepare the most wonderful delicacies ever Hmm. made to man and stand on top of somebody's grave, and they won't come out of the grave to eat them because they have no appetite for them. <laughs> it's only true. the things we have appetite for that tempt us. Right. That's right. So clearly Eve had considered the fruit prior mm-hmm. to the serpent. Mm-hmm. And that, that's my opinion. I'm not giving you doctrine for it, but that sure seems to me that's the way it was. He appealed to what was already what already she was desiring. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but then as a result of those, that choice... And not, and not just the, the choice, but the actions behind that choice, right? Whether to eat the fruit or not to eat the fruit, right? Because that was, that was the choice. Mm-hmm. Believe the lie or don't believe the lie. She chose to believe the lie. And then you see the corresponding action mm-hmm. of that choice, right? And, and again, I'm bringing all this up, and we're going to cover a lot of different things, so that we can fully understand and learn to make, well, hopefully make the better choice. Hopefully that's inherent to us in our our nature and characters we want to be pleasing to the lord right so again this is not to condemn anyone Mm -hmm. or anything right but recognize that these patterns Mm -hmm. right there are so many patterns within scripture just there like that we would get the lesson that we would know it we we would understand understand and recognize the schemes of the the enemy but then also recognize the patterns that we see in scripture and, and in our own lives because it matters, mm-hmm. right? So if we're seeing a result of certain things, then we should be able to identify where it came from. Mm-hmm. And now that you've identified where it came from, that's the root, and now we can deal with it and address it instead of all this, the quote-unquote symptoms of the choice, the action, mm-hmm. right? So back to, to Genesis, right? What was the fruit of that, that thing, that choice? Uh, they were kicked out of the garden. They were kicked out of the garden. And they had to toil and, and suffer. And, and just like the Lord said, like, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. And the curse was given. And the cur- exactly. And the curse was was made manifest there. And given permission to not yep. only be in their lives, but to travel through generations and into the creation that was there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It didn't stop there, right? Now let's go to Genesis 6. And talked about Noah, right? Mm. And of course, there were sons of men that had relationship with relationships with fallen angels, right? 
Daughters? Oh, wait, uh, what were you talking about? The daughters of men. Okay. You said Excuse that. me. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Daughters of men. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Thank okay. you for that correction, honey. <laughs> it's okay, honey. There's a lot. I'm just trying to stay oh, with the Lord here, and there's a lot fine, going honey. on. And it's okay. So thank you. So yes, there were daughters of men that have a relationship with sons of God, right? Or fallen angels, mm. right? Um, verse, this, this is Genesis 6, verse 5, right? And the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and here's the key. Every intent of the thought of his heart was on evil continually. Other mm-hmm. versions say was only on evil. Isn't that what Paul's writing about here? Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. How they understood these things. They saw the invisible attributes, right? So that they're without excuse. But then, what? They, f- they were futile in their thoughts. Their foolish hearts were darkened. So he gave them up, right? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Everyone's, yes. everyone's tracking? Word with you, baby. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then even in verse 28, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Romans chapter 128. Romans 128. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, honey. Romans 120. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Yep. So he gave them over to a de- base mind to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness, it says, right? And, mm-hmm. and the list goes on and on. But we see that same thing here. And then if we go... Um, so, so that's in chapter 6, right? If you go to chapter, I believe it's 8. Um, sorry, cha- yes, it's in chapter 8. Of Genesis? Of Genesis. Um. Right around verse 21, right? The Lord smelled a soothing aroma, and the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. And then you see him make the promise to Noah in chapter 9, right? That he will never destroy the, the earth by a flood again, and he will put his rainbow in the cloud as a sign. And a reminder to the Lord, like the Lord really needs a reminder, <laughs> right? But he does not forget. Right, it's a sign of the covenant, right, um, for perpetual generations. Right? But but the Lord knows that man's heart and, and what and what's on his mind is is evil continuously. Mm-hmm. But then again, that comes to a choice, right? What does Scripture tell us? Wherever your heart is, there your treasure is also. Mm. So. Paul also tells us in Scripture to take every thought captive, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Subject every thought to the what? Uh, underneath the un- underneath Christ, I should say. But take a captive, yes, yes, to Christ. Okay. Um. But then it's not just there, right? It's the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He tells of every generation, right? This is what's required and commanded. And, and honey, I love that you brought up, you know, uh, the effects of sin, right? And, and especially in Deuteronomy 28, mm-hmm. right? And it's also covered in Leviticus 26. Mm-hmm. So again, let's recognize this pattern. Because in prior to giving the outcome and the effects of sin, right? And, and helping spell it out for us that we would know and we would understand. In Leviticus 20, the Lord covers, and this is what, the uh, the law to the Levites and what he's giving uh, the the tribe of the Levites who are supposed to be his his servants and minister to the Lord all day long and not just minister to the Lord but also minister to the people, right? He's giving them uh, the pattern and also discussing penalties for breaking the law. And he covers so many things within here that Paul addresses. Mm-hmm. In verses 29 through 31. Mm-hmm. All right? There's nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I bring this up because the things that we, we're seeing in the world today are clearly the same things this, this, that Paul discusses in Romans mm-hmm. and the same thing that the Lord's discussing in Leviticus. And, and of course, there were, it was prior than prior to that right and we see that even with abraham and you know we've, we've covered all these these things mm-hmm. with sodom and gomorrah right? and we I bring up abraham and lot and we'll discuss that here um 
shortly, right? But what does he discover? Or, or in Leviticus 20, right? Is There's first a, a command to holiness, right? Be holy for I'm holy. But he discusses all these, these things, these issues, right? That are covered here in Romans 1, 16 through, well, 18 through 32. Idolatry. And um, parental disrespect. He covers adultery. He covers... Uh, incest and homosexuality and bestiality and I mean just Mm -hmm. all these literally is covering every topic that you see within or what Paul is discussing and setting the the tone and the structure and saying hey address these things deal with them and it's for everyone because again in Leviticus 20 at every time you see what the results are Ultimately, it's death. And not that the Lord is saying, hey, necessarily you have to go kill them. But they they are separating themselves from the Lord. So then his face is against them. And I'm paraphrasing. I was just giving an overview. And I'll let you, for each each person listening, to go search that out for for themselves. Study it. Right? But then also, and just like in all things, right? If there are questions on it, please reach out. Contact us. And and let's discuss this, right? We can. Uh, I'll give you our email address, uh, which is a day of prayer at yahoo dot com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to discuss it and answer any questions you have. But I want to give you the opportunity to read it for yourself. I want the Holy Spirit minister to you, right? But also, I want to bring this up because it's not just Paul that that discusses it. Um. Well. It's not just Paul. Peter also discussed it. But first, we're going to go to Ephesians because he says something very similar in Ephesians. That's Ephesians 5. And actually, we'll rewind a little bit. In Ephesians 4, starting in verse 17, he talks about the new man, right? Yes. Which is what those who, who would call upon the name of the Lord, who would believe in Christ are. You're a new creation, right? And then he goes into characteristics and attributes, right? Of being that new creation, of being a citizen of heaven, a part of the body of Christ, part of the bride of Christ, or the church, right? Yes. And all these things to not grieve the Holy Spirit. And then as he goes into chapter 5, he's saying, Walk in love, be imitators of God, right? Amen. But then in verse 3 says, and all these other things, fornication, uncleanliness, and covetousness, and put these away from you. Don't be partakers in these things, right? Addressing it to, to clean up our lives. And Peter says something very similar, right? In Second Peter chapter 2. And this is also why I feel led to bring this up, right? Because we're encouraged not to be partakers of this, not to participate in this lifestyle, right? But then, and I'm bringing this up because just like in the garden, woman, later Eve, Mm -hmm. was deceived by creation, right? Right? by a serpent, a creature. Mm -hmm. So Peter's addressing destructive doctrines and heresies and and all these things that that come from false teachers and false prophets. And this is something that is continually brought up in the New Testament. Not that it's new. You see it in the Old Testament as well. There were false prophets. There were a number of different things that led the people astray. And the people suffered as a result. All the wages of sin. To all the way up to death, right? And yes. we say all the wages because it's complicated. There's not a formula that you can do. One plus one doesn't exactly equal two under sin, mm-hmm. right? You don't know what what the the results or the penalty of sin will be. That's why we gave you both Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. And there's so many verses describing the effects and the outcome of sin 
ultimately, at the end, it produces death, right? But in Peter, right, we see the same pattern that we see even in Leviticus. Be holy, right? It's the encouragement. Identify the things. Don't walk in this way. And, and, and I say the pattern that we see in, in Leviticus, but we see it again in Romans, and, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not just one person's thought or idea. Right, but clearly the Lord ministered this to both of these apostles and prophets, right? Clearly Moses writing uh, the first five books of the law, right? Or the, the Torah, the Pentateuch, whichever way you want to phrase it. It's all communicating the same thing. Be holy. Watch out for these things, right? But in verse 7, 2 Peter 2, verse 7, right? The Lord also says that he delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked right yes. yes even though he dwelt among them and was tormented right the for that righteous man this is verse 8 dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds and then it says the lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. Mm-hmm. And you see that carried out and played out. And, um, honey, can you find me the address for, uh, the address, <laughs> scripture where a lot is, all right? But but I say it, it, this matters, and, and you'll see why if you study this out. But even Lot, his own daughters were married. His own daughters were married, but it also says about his daughters that they knew no man intimately. Do you want the original scriptures or in Genesis? In Genesis, yeah. please, oh, yes. Sure. I, I just can't remember exactly what chapter off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. verses 30 to okay. the end. So, so if you study that out, you'll see that this, this impacted him. And not only impacted him, but this had crept into his own household, his own family. Right? It, like, it matters. It's serious. Regardless of what he taught, and that's why it comes down to a choice. Of course, Lot, is, it, it says that he was righteous. So, of course, he's going to teach his children righteousness. But this comes down back to what Paul is saying. It's a choice. We have to choose to do this thing. And no, we can't do it by, um, by this thing. I mean to, to prepare ourselves, to make ourselves ready, a people prepared for the Lord. We can't do it by ourselves, right? But we can do it through through faith and working with the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. But it matters. I wanted us, you know, just to take this time to, to discuss this fully, Mm -hmm. right? And get the, uh, I'll say a greater sense of what the Lord is saying to us and trying to teach us through this writing, right? Yes. All these actions, all these behaviors that don't reflect Christ come with consequences and penalties. Mm -hmm. And you see that even throughout here, Right. We know we are without excuse. So I just want to encourage everyone to make the choice to to be obedient to the Lord, to choose life, mm-hmm. right? That it may be well for us and for our children and our children's children down through the generations, right? That's, yes. that's, a, that's also a promise from the Lord for those that choose obedience and righteousness. And honey, I just wanted to, just to touch on verse 16. Mm-hmm. really quickly it says for i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ Amen. for it is the power of god to salvation for everyone who believes for the jew first and also for the greek um you know when we were reading that the holy spirit just kind of ministered to me i'm not offended exactly. by the gospel of christ i'm not offended by god's requirements for me i'm not offended by his request and um first john says that his commandments are not burdensome to us but we take pleasure and doing the will of the Lord. And so as we're looking at these, it can seem daunting. It can seem tedious, but it's not burdensome for the Lord to request that. And the gospel is the good news of who Christ is, but it contains all of what we are looking for, all of what we need. Amen. And there are times um, it says that they did, not, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Don't get tired of serving God. Don't get tired of being holy. Don't get tired of... <laughs> Um, keeping yourself and continuing to let God purify and sanctify you. Let us continue to walk forward in him because we already know in due season, we will reap if we do not faint.
Which is exactly what Christ says when he says, blessed is anyone who is not offended by me. Exactly. Right? Which is was what you were just talking about. I'm not offended by the gospel. I'm not right? offended of what you asked for me, God. Exactly. I'm not offended of how different we are as believers, peculiar, how unique you want our relationship, how you asked us to not um, partake in things that are not helpful to our life as believers that are contrary to you. We're not ashamed or offended by who God is. But we receive the word, which is Christ, right? With gladness. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Mm-hmm. Right? And they walked with him. We are also walking with him, right? If you, you, you abide in me and my words abide in you, or he's saying he abides, right? The word was with God and the word was God. Okay, so this, this is literally God. So mm-hmm. blessed is anyone who's not offended by me. Let's take this. Let's take it to heart. Let's put it in effect in our lives, in mm-hmm. every area and aspect. You know, and allow him to deal with those amen. things in our lives and in our hearts that don't reflect him, his nature, his character, his attributes. Mm. Because, Consider it good. Right, exactly. Because then that's where we get into, and we haven't gotten there yet, right? Let's uh, believe next time, hopefully, Lord willing, right? Chapter 2, verse 1. Because of those things, right? We know the righteous judgment of God. We know who God is. We know his word, right? We're not ashamed of it. We're not offended by it. Mm. Therefore, you are inexcusable or without excuse oh man right Mm -hmm. we're without excuse we shouldn't judge others we should be rightly judging and examining ourselves and allowing the Lord to clean us up and make us pure and holy through his blood so I just want to encourage everyone to allow the Lord to do that to just be willing and say and, thank you when he does. <laughs> Amen. And praise See it him. Good. I know I'm not who I was. Amen. And and I'm still I haven't arrived. I'm still growing and learning and allowing the Lord to, to clean up areas of my life. Mm-hmm. And, and I know I'm not the only one. But mm-hmm. I'll just make this personal to me, right? Because it applies to me first. Amen. And then as a result of the Lord's will and calling, I can help others. Amen. I can minister to others. What their mm-hmm. need is. Amen. Are there any questions on you that? Because I know there was a lot. Yeah, I just, you, you were talking about a filter and how we rightly judge ourselves. You know, for me, um, as we, uh, in, in verse 28, you know, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God. Mm-hmm. So, if then, right? They did this, then this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then this comes. God gave them up to a debased mind. To do what they ought not to be done, uh, they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malicious. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Oh my gosh! And so, as you as you started uh, the last two lessons, uh, this is for the body. This mm-hmm. is not for those outside the body. As we talk about rightly judging ourselves, what should we consider when we have unrighteousness, mm-hmm. when we have covetousness, when we have malice? Mm-hmm. It all creeps in easy. I'm driving down the road, somebody cuts me off. What is my thought? Lord bless you, or is it why did you cut me off? I mean, mm-hmm. we have to be real. Or, a, or are we angry? And if we are angry mm-hmm. and we have hate in our heart, then we've already murdered our brother, right? That's what that's mm-hmm. what Christ stated. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, very well, plainly, like. So examine ourselves, right? right? That's exact, exactly what I'm saying. So just think about these things, even simple disobedient to parents, right? What are our hearts toward our parents, especially those of us in the body, if our parents are not in the body? Mm-hmm. How are we viewing them? Is that is that in line with what God wants us to believe, what God wants us to think? So this is a great filter and a great tool mm-hmm. for us to do as what you're talking about. And it's also, I think, important for us in preparation for our own hearts as we look deeper into where Paul's going to take us as we continue in Romans. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you, brother. Anyone else have anything they want to share or questions on, mm-hmm. on that? All right. No. Well, let's pause there for today. I know this one was a little longer, um, but uh, uh, I do believe we have, <laughs> I'll say, permission to, to move on to the mm-hmm. next section of Scripture, you know, next time. Amen so that. Uh, with that, can I get someone to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Kyla. 
in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you that you give us wisdom and insight, God, to correctly divide your word and to correctly perceive you, God, and to proceed in the way that you directed us, God. Lord, we thank you for the choice that you've given us, God, but bridle us, God, and help us to fully comprehend you and to walk in your ways, God, and walk in your statutes and keep those, God. We thank you for keeping us in our, as we go about our daily lives, God, and that you keep us and you protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, God. We thank you for our listeners and our partners, God, and that you keep and protect them as well, God, and that you use us to minister to them. Lord, we welcome more into the fold, God, and we're excited to see what you do in their lives, God, and how you touch them, God, and how you build them up. And we just thank you in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we love you. And uh, again, I just want to reiterate this before we go. If you have any questions, please, or any or anything that the Lord is leading you to share or or any things of that nature, all right? If you just want to share with us, reach out, just contact us. You can reach us at a day of prayer at yahoo.com. Mm-hmm. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to answer any questions that you have and and just minister as the Lord leads. All right? So uh, it's always an option. Amen. And we love you. We're praying for you. So God mm-hmm. bless you and have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, Take care and God bless you.